ethics, it's important to actually think about how we structure the research. And one of the first things we do in research is we come up with a research question. A research question is something kind of like a theory uh, that you think something is related to something. I believe studying will improve grades. That could be a research question, but a hypothesis has to be more specific than that. It has to be something that is testable. So just saying that you think studying improves grades is not testable. A hypothesis for, for that type of research theory would be something like uh, students who study for four hours will perform higher on their test than students who study for half an hour. That you're describing the what you're describing what you're going to measure, the length of time they're going to study, one hour versus four hours, and what you're going to compare that to their grades on a test. That becomes a research hypothesis. Another thing about a research hypothesis is it must be empirical. You can't uh, just use anecdotal evidence. You can't just say, this one time I studied and I did well, and this other time I studied and I didn't do well, so studying doesn't matter. That's anecdotal. Anecdotal means personal life stories. We know personal life stories are a valuable way of knowing and learning about the world, but for hypothesis testing scientific models, they are not uh, helpful. We need something more than just anecdotal evidence, and we need something more than common sense. For instance, with common sense, we often think about uh, the things that people have told us, and it seems true, but we've never actually tested them. An example of this could be that you assume that students who are shy tend to be the shy nerds and they'll do well at school. Well, do they? Or perhaps shy people at school uh, are actually very, very anxious and they don't do well at school. Maybe it goes against common sense. There are a lot of psychological theories that back up what's known as common sense, but there's also many that disprove common sense. Psychology as a science is more than just folk knowledge and more than common sense. So finally, these hypotheses should always be theoretically driven. There should be some connection. You shouldn't just take random things and match them together, like uh, someone's foot size should predict their favorite TV show. There's no theory behind that unless there's a specific foot related show uh, out there that maybe would drive that. So without any theory, the hypothesis wouldn't make sense. So just to run you through a few more examples to help you out here, uh, we cannot use non-evidence as evidence. And where this comes up a lot is when we think about things beyond the scientific realm and more into the spiritual realm. For instance, if we were to say uh, that ghosts exist, well, how do you test if ghosts exist? Let's say you go to a house that's supposedly haunted and you sit there for a little while with, with cameras rolling, you're trying to catch footage of the ghost, and when you don't catch footage of the ghost, somebody says, well, the ghost didn't want to come today. You're not able to actually prove or disprove that the ghost exists with that method because you're, you're then accepting non-evidence as evidence. The ghost didn't want to come today, but ghosts still exist. That would violate the assumptions of the scientific method. In a similar form, if somebody were to say there's an invisible teacup floating in outer space, but it's invisible and we can never actually measure it, but it's there, well, we can't use that non-evidence as evidence. Uh, the, the area that we need to prove is you need to establish something that's testable and provable. And finally, it can't just be personal preference. If you believe that pancakes are the best breakfast meal or your hockey team is the best hockey team, even if they never win the Stanley Cup playoffs, even if they never make it to the playoffs, there's no way we can use a scientific method to prove what is the best pop song or breakfast food or sports game because it's so anecdotal and preferential. We could still study these phenomena in a different way if we retool our hypothesis. Perhaps if you're interested in studying preferences in breakfast foods or sports or music, you could think about those things in a new way. Try and think about something you could study that could be testable with these phenomena. Maybe you want to test which sports team sells the most merchandise a year, or which sports team has the most followers on social media. That could tell you about the most popular sports team. Maybe you actually want to see which one wins the Stanley Cup the most. Well, those stats are pretty easy to crunch. But to say the best sports team, and Toronto Maple Leafs fans will say they're the best no matter how often they don't win anything, uh, then it gets in hard on how you're going to measure that. In terms of ghosts, we can look at how people who believe in ghosts and people who don't believe in ghosts vary on personality traits. That's one way we could examine uh, beliefs in ghosts. But we cannot test whether ghosts exist or not in psychology using the scientific method.